Hi, my name is Mark Dijker, and welcome to another episode of Durable Functions. This is the second part of the Durable Functions API series, and again we are looking at the Durable Orchestration Client. In this episode we're going to look at the get status async functionality, and that is used to retrieve the status for one or more orchestration instances. When we look at the API of the Jubal orchestration client base, we see five methods to retrieve the status of an orchestration. These first three can be used to return the status of one instance, and the last two can be used to return the status of a collection of instances. Before we look into the differences, uh, let's first have a look at the return type. That's the Jubal orchestration status. So here we see the definition of that status object. What we get back is the name of the orchestration function, uh, the instance ID, the time it was created, when it was last updated, uh, the JSON representation of the input, and the JSON of the output, if it is completed, uh, the runtime status, and that's an enumeration you can see here, uh, a custom history, if that is set, and uh, JSON representation of the history, so what kind of executions were, uh, were done and which one were started and completed. When we look at the methods to retrieve the status of a single instance, we have these three variations available. So the most basic one, you just specify the instance ID. With the second one, you specify the ID but also a boolean to indicate if you want to show the history. So if you supply that, you'll see uh, all the executions of the individual functions that, that have been taken place. And the final one, then and besides the instance ID and the show history, there are two additional options. One is to also include the uh, output of each of the history steps. So it uh, will show the output of each of the activity functions and another value to show the input of all of these functions as well. So let's have a look how that uh, looks like in Visual Studio. Here we have a function called HTTP get status for one. So it's an HTTP triggered function which listens to the status slash ID route so if we go to this uh, route and provide an instance ID uh, and possibly some uh, query string parameters, uh, it will return the status of uh, a single instance. So I have a helper method here which um, checks if some query string parameters are available. And if they are available, then I'm using the get status async method uh, where I use the show history and show history output. Uh, there's actually a typo here. And if the query string parameters are not found, I'm falling back to the most basic implementation, and that's the get state async method when I just provide the ID. So this instance is already running here locally. So let's now trigger this. So I've got uh, this instance here, which I executed just a couple of minutes ago. So I'm now going to send a um, get request to status slash this instance ID. And I get the 200 OK back containing this um, status object. So we see the name of the orchestration, the instance ID, and it was created, and it was the last updated, the input and the output, and the runtime status. And it's an enumeration which is represented uh, as integers. And one is completed. I didn't set any custom status. And when you do this default, you also don't get the history. So uh, these are null. So let's now run it for the same instance. But now let's specify that we want to show the history and also want to show the output of the history. So let's run this one. And again, we get all the same information back but as you can see now we have this history array where we can see all of the uh, tasks that have been uh, started we can see the execution is started of the hello orchestration 
and we can see that the uh, task is completed. Um, that was of the hello name activity. And if I move myself, we see that the execution is completed of the orchestration and that the orchestration is then done. Okay, so let's switch back briefly to the presentation. So the next methods we have available are the methods to retrieve the status for a collection of orchestration instances. And with the first one, um, you can only provide a cancellation token, but even that is optional because it has a default implementation. And with this method, you retrieve all the uh, status objects for um, yeah, any orchestrations which are, are available in the application. So there, it's, it's, there's no limit. So if you have lots and lots of orchestrations uh, which, uh, which you had running in your instance and you haven't cleaned them up or purged them, uh, I will discuss that in the next video, uh, then yeah, you could potentially get a huge list back uh, of orchestration instances. So that's why the cancellation uh, token is there. So be aware of that. So the next method is a lot more valuable, I find, uh, because you can specify uh, two dates. So the first date is mandatory. So you have to specify the date, the starting date, from when you want to query that the orchestration was started. Then you have an optional end date, uh, which again is also when the orchestrations are uh, started, but now you can specify a time window. Uh, the other useful thing is that you can specify an orchestration runtime status. So you can really look for only the uh, orchestrations which are failed or only uh, which one which are still running. Uh, but it's an inaugural, so it's actually a collection. So you can search for things which are either failed or running. And again, you can specify a cancellation token if you want to cancel this. So let's have a look how this uh, is working in Visual Studio. So here's my function called HTTP get status for many. Again, it's an HTTP trigger. This time it's a post and it just listens to the status route. Um, I actually read an object from uh, the content. That's a get status request. Um, this is the content uh, in it. So I can optionally specify a created from and created to date and a, um, a list of orchestration statuses. So this is just basically my, uh, my query object. So I obtain my query object from the uh, request. Then I check if some values are uh, filled in. So if there are need some dates filled in or some statuses to match. So if they are there, then I use this more elaborate query based on the dates and statuses. And if nothing is uh, specified in the object, I just uh, do the basic one and just get all the uh, statuses of all the instances that are known. So the function app is still running. So let's trigger this from VS Code. So this is the most basic one. This is just the slash status and we don't provide any uh, object uh, as our query. So let's run that. We get a 200 OK back. And we see a couple of instances uh, here. The Hello World orchestration, long running orchestration, Another hello name orchestration. So not, not too many objects. But now let's do a bit more interesting one. And let's actually retrieve uh, an instance based on a status. And so I've listed again the uh, states enumeration here because we have to provide a, a, a number and not a, not a name. So if we want to query on uh, failed orchestrations, I put a three in here and I also specified a, um, a certain time window uh, when I actually knew that there, there was a failed orchestration. So let me send this. So now I want to see only the, the failing orchestrations. And we see here that we have need found one failing orchestration right here. 
And again, uh, this is an array. So you can actually specify if I want to uh, find both completed and failed ones, then you can do just like this, failed and completed, write again. And now you actually have uh, a list of both frustrations, which are both um, completed with uh, runtime one, um, but also need a runtime three. All right, um, this concludes uh, part two of the Dribble Functions API. Um, the next video uh, will be the last one about the Dribble orchestration client when we look at uh, the, the termination of uh, orchestrations and also uh, purging the history to, uh, to clean it up. So if you like this video, uh, please uh, like it. And if you're not subscribed uh, yet, uh, please do subscribe. And you can also find me on Twitter at Mark Duiker. And uh, there's also uh, a blog which you can read more information about Azure Functions and Jubal Functions. Okay, see you later.